In module 3, we will talk about the CMOS logic family, which is the most important logic family forming the majority of combinational and sequential logic. We will start by first considering the CMOS inverter as the basis of the family. So by the end of module 2, we talked about problems with uh, ratioed logic. Ratioed logic is any logic that has a driver load architecture. This is regardless of the type of transistor used in either the driver or the load. Actually, the whole thing is just based on the fact that there is a driver and a load. And the problem mainly happens when we are producing the output load, when we have an NMOS driver. And the problem is because the way to produce a, an output low value is by drawing a current, a steady state current from the supply VDD, which leads to a large voltage drop across a load. This large voltage drop causes us to observe a, a low output voltage value of the output low. But um, the, in our, another way to see it is that we have a potential divider in this case between uh, the on resistance of the uh, pull, -down net, uh, the pull down network RM and the uh, resistance or impedance of the load RM. And so we, we observe the following problems. Either V output high or V output low is not equal to its uh, ideal value. So if we use a PMOS driver, V output high will not be the ideal value. If we use a, uh, an NMOS driver, then regardless of the type of load we use, V output low will not be equal to zero volt. What's more is that V output low or V output high, depending on which one is not the uh, ideal value, is gonna be a function of the sizing of the driver and the load transistors. So this is bad. We don't want the output values to be uh, functions of, uh, of transistor sizes. The fact that we have a non-ideal output value is because we do have steady state current. And steady state current is gonna be a problem because it causes us to see non-ideal outputs, but also because it leads to steady state power dissipation or static power dissipation. And the final problem we observed with, uh, uh, with uh, ratio logic families, especially the enhancement load family, is that noise margins are very narrow because a lot of, um, a lot of headroom is wasted on either the output low or the output high, but more importantly, a lot of space is wasted on the transition region because the slope of the voltage transfer characteristic is, uh, is not high. And so let's see how the CMOS inverter functions and if it addresses these four problems. Like we have four problems, let's see if all of them are addressed. So the CMOS inverter consists of a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor. So kind of looks like, at first glance, like a pseudo NMOS inverter, but there is a difference. And the difference is that we do not have a driver and a load. Recall that the definition of a driver is a transistor that accepts a logic input. In this case, both the NMOS and the PMOS accept the logic input V input. And so we do not actually have a load. Both transistors are drivers. In fact, as we will see, both transistors perform the function of a driver for one of the inputs. So both of them work as either a driver or a load depending on the input. So we have a transistor MN, which is an NMOS, a transistor MP, which is a PMOS. One thing to notice about the CMOS inverter is that the input node, the input, is the gate of the PMOS and the gate of the NMOS. So they share the gate input, but they also share the output node. The output node is the drain for the PMOS and the drain for the NMOS. But recall for the PMOS, the drain is the lower potential. For the NMOS, the drain is the higher potential. So the output node is the drain for both of them. The source of the PMOS is at supply and the source for the NMOS is at ground. So like any inverter, Let's first try to find out the values of V output high and V output low. We will first try to find the value of V output high by using V input equals zero volt. So this is to find V output high. Of course, uh, using V input equals zero volt is still not proven to be a correct input because we should be using, we ideally should be using V input equals V output low. But let's check if this is true later when we solve for V output low. So with V input equals zero volt, the NMOS is cut off. So this is one fact we do know, because VGS for the NMOS is equal to V input, and when V input is zero volt, the NMOS is definitely cut off, because VGS is less than V threshold. 
we have only one equation, which is KCL at the output node, saying that the current in the PMOS is equal to the current in the NMOS. And the question is, what are the regions of operation? For the NMOS, we know that it is cut off, and therefore the current in the PMOS is equal to the cutoff current of the NMOS is equal to zero. So there is zero current flowing. Now the question is, is the PMOS on or off? So VGSP is equal to uh, zero minus VDD, which is minus VDD, and it is less than V threshold P. So the PMOS is on. The PMOS is on, not because minus VDD is a negative number, Recall that V threshold P is also a negative number. It is on because minus VDD is a large negative number. In general, in, in most circuits, if the, input, if the gate input of the PMOS is zero volt, the PMOS is gonna be on. If the gate input of the NMOS is zero volt, it's gonna be off. If the gate input of an NMOS is VDD, it's gonna be on. If the gate input of a PMOS is VDD, it's gonna be off. But in this case, we know that the PMOS is on. But the question is, is it on or ohmic or on or off? So let's assume that it is ohmic at first, and the situation is like this. We have the PMOS, there's an open circuit on the drain of the PMOS, which is the output node, and this open circuit is created by uh, the uh, NMOS being cut off. The gate of the PMOS is at zero volt, and thus the PMOS is on, and its VGS is equal to minus VDD. And so if we assume that the PMOS is saturated, then the saturation current is equal to Kp over 2 into minus Vdd minus V threshold P all squared. Now, this is not equal to zero. This can never be equal to zero because Vdd minus V threshold is a finite number. So this is a non-zero number. So this does not equal zero. So this is a false assumption. And the NMOS has to be assumed, and the PMOS has to be assumed omic. And so if we write the ohmic current for the PMOS, which is Kp into Vgs minus V threshold P into Vdsp minus Vdsp square over 2 is equal to 0. This is solved by Vdsp equals 0. And the drain voltage for the PMOS in this case is V output, specifically V output high. And uh, therefore, uh, v, D, v drain for the uh, PMOS, which is V output high, minus V source, which is VDD, is equal to zero, leading to a solution V output high equals VDD. And so we have found the value of V output high to be VDD. Now let's try to find the value of V output low. Uh, to find V output low, we use V input equals V output high, which is VDD. We already know this for a fact because we have already found the value of the output high. Again, we use the KCL equation of the output, IP equals IN. With V input equals VDD, the PMOS is going to be cut off, because VGS for the, for the PMOS is going to be 0 volt, and it needs to be less than V threshold P, which is a negative number. So it is greater than V threshold P, and thus the PMOS is cut off. And therefore, the NMOS current is equal to 0. The NMOS in this case, it looks like this. The input is at VDD. The output node, uh, which is the drain of the NMOS, is uh, open-circuited. And the thing that creates the open circuit is the cutoff PMOS. And so this NMOS transistor is definitely on, because VGS is equal to VDD. And the question is, is it on and sat or on and ohmic? And if we try to find the saturation current, in this case, it's going to be Kn over 2 into VDD minus V threshold n all square, which is not equal to zero, and thus it is not saturated. It has to be ohmic. And the ohmic current is Kn into Vgs minus V threshold into Vdsn minus Vdsn square over two. And if we equate this to zero, it is solved by Vdsn equals zero. V drain for the NMOS is V output, and the source is at ground, and therefore V output is equal to zero volt which is the value for V input we used when we calculated V output high, and therefore the entire solution is correct. Now, if we examine the behavior of the CMOS inverter, we find that V output high is equal to VDD, and V output low is equal to zero volt. We also notice that when we obtain the values of V output high and V output low, the size of the transistor does not make any difference to the value of, of the V outputs. 
because k in both cases is going to be cancelled out in the solution and therefore this is not ratioed logic. We also notice that the current flowing in both cases is equal to zero and therefore there is no static current. So this is three of the problems of ratio logic already being solved. V output high and V output low are at the ideal values. There is no steady state current flow and the outputs are not a function of transistor sizes. In fact, there, there's something very important to notice. Everything is dependent on, on this, on the current equal zero in both cases. This is what makes CMOS work. Because what happened in, in the case of V output high is that the PMOS was ohmic and therefore an impedance. There was an open circuit which caused this impedance to short VDD to the output node. When we were producing the output low, the NMOS was also ohmic and so it was an impedance and therefore it shorted the output node to ground. So what causes the NMOS and the PMOS transistors to be able to short the output node to supply them to ground is the fact that there's no current flowing. It's very critical that no current flows in any steady state for a CMOS circuit.